Well, hello everyone, and thank you again for joining IRD Invest. Uh, thanks for those who have been online with us for the earlier sessions today and for those who have just joined us now. Uh, as you may know, we're exploring the theme, addressing the need for change. Uh, so it's my pleasure to welcome Martin Feltz, who's the CEO of Pure Profile, uh, who's here together with CEO, sorry, COO and CFO, Mel Shepherd. Uh, and Pure Profile is a global data and insights organisation providing online research and digital advertising services for agencies, marketers, researchers and publishers. The company provides its global clients with the resources to make better business decisions by delivering best in class research and digital advertising solutions via its three core divisions, data and insights, the self-service platform, and pure.amplify media. A quick introduction to Martin, the CEO. He has a long and distinguished history in the data and insights industry and a strong understanding of the changing landscape of digital marketing and the demands placed on businesses to address regulatory changes and customer appetites in our current and hopefully soon post COVID world. I'd now like to hand over to you, Martin, who um, will tell us more and uh, for our screen sharing to kick off. Thank you guys. Um, thank you very much, Jane. And thank you very much for inviting us to um, this session today and, and, and what an important topic that we're talking about. So thank you also everybody for joining. So in the next 20 minutes or so, I'll have a little conversation and talk about Pure Profile. Mel is also our CFO and COO, and Mel is going to talk through some of the financial numbers. And then we've got about 10 minutes at the end for questions. So um, for those of you who are unaware, um, Pure Profile is a data insights and media company. So in other words, we help organizations understand their consumers more, their marketplace better, and then reach them with the right marketing in the right way. So our aspiration is that Pure Profile Insights are used by every company in their decision making. It might sound lofty, but today 18% of the ASX 200 actually use our data. Our vision is to provide and um, deliver more value from the world's information. And, and that makes sense because in the last two years alone, 90% of the world's data was actually created. Why was it created um, in the last two years? Well, because we're all spending more time online. So that can be with e-commerce, um, you're viewing news articles, downloading um, TV shows, movies, uh, et cetera. Etc. Et so companies are having more and more data available to them, which they need to be made, which they need to make sense of, and which is where Pure Profile steps in. And our mission is twofold. That's firstly to reward individuals for sharing their opinions, sharing their data, and ensuring that they are rightly remunerated for that. And also for organizations so that they can make sense of that data and make actionable business decisions. And um, it's not by chance that uh, you see certain adverts or that products are developed in a certain way, or even going to the supermarket, the layout of products as you walk around, all of that has required uh, looking at some sort of data and having some sort of insights. And that's where Pure Profile steps in. We've got this fictitious person um, that we're using as an example. And I, I see in some chat rooms that they seem to get quite annoyed at this fictitious person. But anyway, um, so here we have somebody who uh, lives in Byron Bay and uh, a, a good salary. Um, they're a chief marketing officer for a not-for-profit business. And really our purpose is in helping brands to understand this person further. Because if brands know that she drives a Lexus hybrid, then Volvo will know that they actually can market high-end hybrid cars to the individual. And that perhaps will garner a response. Medibank in the crowd and insurance world will actually talk to her about ethical health insurance products. They might be more expensive, but again, this person would be more interested in that is ethically um, based. 
New South Wales are interested in this person's vote. Again, it's going to be climate change because we know that um, these are elements that actually drives her. And finally, she donates 10% of her salary to charity. And therefore, Bernardo's Australia, it's a great person for them to be in contact, um, maybe to target for their Christmas donor uh, acquisition activity. So as this highlights, Understanding individuals better means that brands can actually communicate better with the individual and therefore can target with the right messages that this person is going to be more receptive to. And that's what we do. We help organizations understand individuals better. We have a really clear strategy and our really clear strategy is threefold. Firstly, to grow as a global business. Today, 60% of our revenue comes out of Australia, 40% the rest of the world. And um, with a, a network around the world, and I'll talk about that in a moment, investors are saying to us, we want to see that global business grow. You've proven what you can do in Australia, now grow it in the rest of the world. Self-service. We have three core self-service products, and that's also known as SaaS, software as a service. And again, investors and ourselves and our clients are saying to us, actually extend further the self-service um, number of clients that you have, because that means clients can receive data and insights whenever they want that. And it also means from an organizational standpoint, we're more scalable, we're more efficient, and we can grow faster. And having a bigger and better global business, having more technology means that our two core business units of data and insights, delivering those insights of individuals and of media advertising, actually activating, executing based on that knowledge we have, they too can grow. So it's a very clear business strategy. Why do clients work with us? Well, clients work to us with us because we have a, a global reach. So we have millions of deeply profiled consumers around the world. We're uh, 21 years of age this year, and that's really important because an organization might be um, running an insights project or launching a campaign, and it might be worth multi-million dollar to that company. And they want to know that the organization they're working with can be trusted, has a strong brand, and that the insights that are being delivered to them or the campaign that's being delivered actually is going to work. So having that 21 year history is really, really important. And then as an organization, we're very, very proud of our net promoter score. That's uh, a standard um, survey that you run out to customers, understanding how they feel about you as an organization. Our net promoter score is 82. Anything above 72 is world class. And that means as an organization, we're getting it right. We're delivering to our customers how they want the services to be delivered. And that's around having a quick response personal service and also dedicated teams that they work with. What do they use or how do we make our money in three key areas? Firstly, data and insights. That's simply running surveys. That's where a brand could be Mercedes, BMW, Medibank, et cetera, wants to understand something about a target audience, their consumers, maybe competitive consumers. We run over 3 million surveys a year <clears throat> around the world for organizations who, who, who want to um, gain deeper insights. Then we have our, our self-service platform. That's the second area that we make money. Our self-service platform is where organizations can directly go into that data source, can gain their own insights, either by running surveys or by using our very intuitive tools and running queries across that data and delivering back to their organization those insights without picking up the phone to anybody at Pure Profile. And then thirdly, we have Pure Amplify Media and Pure Amplify Media activates, executes on all of those insights that the companies have found. And what's unique about Pure Amplify Media is that all of our planning is done on first party data. And that's really, really important because it makes campaigns much more accurate and it means we get a much better response and a better outcome for brands. How do we do that? As I said, we, we have a global business um, uh, around the world. 
Um, we have data and we have partners and we have proprietary data around the world that consumers, customers can uh, access. And then we have that suite of self-service products. And um, so this really just gives you an idea of uh, a couple of clients who maybe work in, in different areas with us. So within Data and Insights, might be Medibank, London School of Economics, IAG as an example, self-service platform, Uber Eats, I'm sure you all know very well, Flybys, clearly we know very well, Adora, and then Pure Amplify um, Media, RNIB as a UK example, Caterpillar, we would all know, Bernardo's Australia. So these are all household brands who come to Pure Profile because they, as I said, either want to understand their consumers better or they want to reach them with the right messaging. As an organization today, we have offices in seven countries. We have 700 clients around the world, 155 staff. We have a 91% repeat client um, ratio, and, and again, that comes from having that high net promoter score of 82%. And again, we have 20% in reoccurring revenue. So we start every year, either through SaaS um, solutions or multi-year uh, projects, we know 20% of our revenue. That only goes up as we increase the SaaS uptake. Now, we might only have offices in seven countries, but actually in the last year, we delivered insights from 91 countries. So we already have a brand, we already have awareness, clients already know us in 91 countries. And one of our big parts of our uh, strategy execution I talked about at the beginning is us actually reversing into those countries where we already have a strong demand and a strong brand and a strong awareness. People and culture are at the heart of, of every business. And, and for us, that's phenomenally important. We, we spend a, a lot of energy and a lot of effort and a lot of time ensuring that we have the right people in, in pure profile and that they're supported in the right way. And that's from everything to running a business in today's COVID times. We make sure we are a, a COVID ready business. That to, to us, it doesn't matter if somebody joins our company from Perth or Byron Bay, Sydney, Melbourne, wherever in the world, actually everything is set up for um, correct onboarding, training, uh, managers support, uh, execution, so that we are embracing fully today's standard of working. And we make sure our employees are fully supported in areas such as um, social areas, in such as management areas, training areas, et cetera, et cetera. And as a company, we have a, a very diverse gender, nationality, age, and this also reflects all of that and the support we give them in a really high employee satisfaction. And actually our employee satisfaction is 86%. That's up 14% in the prior year. And actually anything above 78 is again first class. So as a company, we're phenomenally proud that we have first class score around our client net promoter score and first class score from our employees and from our team. And as a business, if you are producing Using those two um, scores very highly, then what will follow is revenues, client satisfaction, uh, higher employee retention, higher profitability, etc. So that's why we particularly spend a lot of time in that area. A couple of metrics I'll pull out that, again, we're very proud of. And really, sh you should ask every investment that you're part of, what's your client net promoter score and what's your employee satisfaction score? Both of those are high. It's a good investment. 98% of our employees recommend Pure Profile as a great place to work. And 97% of our employees are proud to work for Pure Profile. And that's really important to us. Having the right people in the business will make the right decisions. We also have a strong environmental, social and, and governance policy. And again, that's very important to our clients, um, to our, our employees, and also to us as a business moving forward. How can we ensure that we tread lightly in the planet today? And actually, we have a purpose other than just um, delivering great insights, delivering great results for our shareholders and making strong profits as an organisation. And our strong ESG is very important to us as an organisation. 
And now with that, I'm sure you've heard enough of me for a moment. So I am now going to hand over to Mel. Thank you, Martin, and good morning, everyone. So I have the absolute pleasure of talking you through our FY21 results, and I'm also going to give you a bit of a snapshot into how we're going one quarter into our new financial year. So we had an amazing, fantastic uh, year last year with um, revenue of $30 million for the year, which was 24% up. Uh, very proud of that. Um, and in addition to really strong revenue result, a lot of that um, revenue upside flew straight through to the bottom line. So our EBITDA result was 3.1 million and that was up 124%. And really importantly, and it's really important to us, our operating cash flow. So making sure that we are um, sustainable from a cash flow perspective, our operating cash flow was 2.4 million, which was actually a million dollars up on the prior year or 65% up. Um, when you look at our business unit revenues, our data and insights business, which is actually our biggest pool of revenue, um, and particularly in the APAC region, um, we had growth of 34% year on year for both the APAC and what we would call the non-APAC region, which comprises of the UK, um, mainland Europe and the US. Um, and also our SaaS plus platform was 1.1 million for the year, which was 119% up. So when we look at the SaaS platform, that was uh, there was a lot of growth in Q4 um, related to the partnership that we launched with Flybys in Q4. So it launched around about just at the very end of April. And also we launched our audience intelligence product or solution in Q4 as well. So we saw the first lot of revenue coming into the PL from then. You just wanna to go to the next slide, please, Martin? Just to give you some financial trends. So how's the business been going over the last couple of years? Well, you can see our revenue growth um, over from FY19 to FY20. Had a bit of a dip back in FY20, mostly off the tail end of um, uh, FY20Q4 and predominantly in our media business. But you can see that we went back up. You can see actually from an EBITDA perspective, um, in FY19 and FY18, we did a lot of restructuring, put a lot of cost out of the organisation. And that's what you're seeing there. Um, the benefits of that into FY20, whereas FY21 is the benefit of those cost savings. But in addition to that, the revenue growth that we've seen in that year. And you can see clearly that our data and insights business, which is really our core of our business, has been growing consistently from FY19 up to FY21. And then you can see the exponential growth in our SaaS business um, from FY20 to FY21. And you can see clearly there that that business was actually pretty stable and flat year on year from 19 to 20. And then the benefit of new solutions coming in and also new partnerships has really bolstered that revenue. Next slide, please, Martin. So just a little bit of a snapshot into our capital expenditure. You can see here clearly that we've actually spending a lot less than what we used to. If I actually put FY17 up on there, that would probably be closer to $5 million. Uh, so we spent about $2 million in uh, product development um, in FY21. The key focus of, of that was really around our SaaS platform solutions, such as audience intelligence. And one of the things that you're really going to see the benefit of is really this clear focused corporate strategy, which means that we're really disciplined about where we spend our, our um, CapEx and making sure that we are developing the right products that we can commercialise. You should see for FY22, it'll be about the same. The spend will be about the same, maybe a little bit higher than FY21. So no significant shift in CapEx expenditure expected in the new financial year. And then the final slide is really how we're going a quarter in. We're now nearly actually at the end of Q1. Um, we released our July results when we put our annual report out, which is why we're sharing these numbers with you. But we've also actually put some guidance out about two or three weeks ago to the ASX, really about how our revenue is going for the full quarter. So we had a really fast start or strong start to FY22. July revenue was 3.1 million, which was 50% up um, on the prior year. And we had strong growth across all divisions, as you can see in the little table there. You can see our um, data and our insights business in the APAC region was up 41%. In um, the non-APAC regions was down, well, sorry, was up 27%, slightly slower growth than um, what you've seen in APAC. And then the SaaS platform, importantly, was 207% up. So we've seen a full quarter of um, the Flybys uh, partnership in that quarter. So our guidance for the market for Q1 is that we're expecting that growth that we um, experienced into July to flow through to August and September. 
and that we would expect that at a minimum our revenue will be up for the quarter when we release our Q1 results, which will probably be about the third week of October, will be um, at least 50% up on the prior year. So really proud of the start to the financial year. Um, a lot of the momentum that we had in FY21 has been carried through and actually we're starting to see stronger growth, um, which is really fantastic news. And I'll hand back to Martin now, I think that's me. Great, thank you very much, Mel. And I can see we've got some great questions in the Q&A, so I will try to get through this um, quickly. You can all review the slides and then we can, we can get to the Q&A questions. So um, we focus a lot on how we're growing as a, as a business and de delivering on our strategy. And we talked about global strategy, 40% of our new clients actually came from new markets in financial year 21. We have 58% growth in the number of um, SaaS clients and also 45% um, year on year increase in project volume. And all of that increase uh, leads to increased revenue. So just a couple of operating highlights. <clears throat> key brands that we work with, I, I talked at the beginning that 18% of the ASX 200 work with us. It's about being a very trusted, trusted brand, trusted organization. <clears throat> a couple of solutions that we're really proud of. Um, I know one of the Q&A points we'll talk about being unique. Audience intelligence, we feel, is, is absolutely a unique solution. And we are going for a couple of patents on this solution as well because we believe it's unique. This is where an organization can log in and they can understand perhaps their own demographics. Because think about it, when you buy a pair of headphones from JB Hi-Fi or some mandarins from Coles or wherever you shop, then actually you're just a credit card in many instances. Um, so brands need to understand the demographics and the person behind that credit card. Uh, our system audience intelligence allows companies to log in. Um, it's based on 400,000 Australians data and it allows, as I said, companies to log in and actually see themselves, their market share and their competitors market share um, and then to make actions on that. We launched that uh, uh, April of last year, Uber Eats is the first client that's signed up. So we're really excited to have Uber Eats as a client. Actually, just on Monday, we launched Fast Food QSR also as a, a vertical. So that's McDonald's, Domino's, Hungry Jack's, etc. So really excited about that. We've been shortlisted for the SAS Innovation Award, um, which is an Australian government award, which we're really excited about. And also the fact that we only launched a solution in April um, and have been shortlisted for that is very exciting so we're a finalist we're here on friday actually if we won or we're just uh one of the best so finalist and then as i said we <clears throat> launched uh, the food delivery vertical in q4 and then we've just launched qsr and then retail fast food and then retail will follow in a couple of weeks so really excited about um this unique solution in the marketplace because it has a couple of features nobody else can do um, Mel touched on this as well. We, we um, had a partnership that went live with uh, flybys at the end of April of, of last financial year also. So this is where flybys members can earn points in return for giving their opinions. We created a unique co-branded environment and um, through that have brought phenomenally uh, a, a big base, a phenomenal new base of individuals to actually the research space to benefit all of our clients and the whole Australian research space. So we're chuffed about that. Also, Flybys has opened a lot of doors for us around Asia, UK <clears throat> and the US, where people are now coming to us saying, oh, I know Flybys, why do they work with you? So other partnerships that we now can roll out on top of our existing partnerships in Australia, such as News Corp, such as Raise, AA Smart Fuel um, in New Zealand, uh, SGAG in Singapore, and others will follow. So flybys, we launched at the end of April. We've issued, this is just in half of May and June, 27 million flybys points and 95,000 surveys um, were completed in half of May and June as well. So this really, really exciting partnership that, as I said, grows the Australian business and opens up many other doors for us around the world. 
um, <clears throat> to try and bring this a little bit more into focus, why do clients work with us? So Business Australia, they wanted to um, increase their uh, number of users, the retention of members that they had and the number of subscribers that they had. And by, uh, again, first, understanding the right audience and uh, secondly, uh, uh, delivering the right campaign, 190% increase in members, 1000% increase in web page views and 28 point increase in the net promoter score. Um, flybys here is an example and I talked about that they wanted their members to, to earn flybys points by doing something other than shopping in, in Coles or Target, etc. Um, to gain, secondly, to gain insights on their members, and they do that by having the community. Um, and, and thirdly, uh, it's all based on a revenue share, so that benefits flybys as well. So as I talked about, 27 million flybys points were awarded just in half of May and June, so that ticked a big box for flybys. 95,000 surveys completed again that generate a lot of data, a lot of insights for, for flybys as well. So really pleased with that partnership. And then uh, Pure Amplify got, got an example here with Bernardo's Australia, again, wanting to grow um, their donations. And again, what we do first is we understand what are the drivers. So we run research and generate insights about what are the drivers for people to donate to not-for-profits. Then once we understand that, we then can devise a campaign to launch the right campaign to the right audience. And it can be a multifaceted campaign to go targeting specific groups of audiences that will respond to different messages. 300% increase in donations, 9.2 million ad impressions, which is incredible for any Bernardo's account, and a 12% increase in brand awareness and 6% increase in likelihood to recommend. And actually on the basis of this, we um, launched in Pure Amplify a not-for-profit vertical, where actually we work with a, a number of other not-for-profits because we realize we have the right solution. So moving forward, um, Global business, we doubled the size of, of the UK panel in that year. As I said, 40% of our new clients came from outside of Australia. More data, we launched a flybys partnership, also one in Singapore called SGAG, and self-service pilot launch with audience intelligence and food delivery, signed Uber Eats, and there were other ones to follow this quarter. What would you expect from us in, in this half? Developing new partnerships, so we should be able to make new announcements about partnerships in Europe uh, and the UK. Launch new verticals for audience intelligence, just gone live with uh, fast food, soon with retailers, as I said, in a couple of weeks. So uh, most probably too early for this quarter. Next quarter, hopefully some great marquee brands that you all will recognize will be using that solution. And then to continue that growth of our global business. And we hired some key salespeople uh, in our UK office and elsewhere outside of Australia that are already generating results for us. And again, we'll report on that in our Q1 report, which will come out in October. So in summary, as an organization, strong growth, cash flow positive, really highly eng engaged employees and also clients. And we've got some really cool, exciting solutions. So that's a bit from me and Mel. And with that, I will hand back. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Thank you very much, Martin and Mel, for a great presentation. Uh, we do have quite a number of questions here ready to go. So I'll just kick off with the first one. So can you explain how you access the data that informs the insights you present to your clients and how that process of accessing data confers any sort of competitive advantage? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I know we don't have much time, so it's sort of asking about the whole business. We um, really get generate data in, in three um, ways. So firstly, we generate our own data and insights. So that can be we recruit somebody directly to conduct surveys with us. They join our, our panel or our peer profile community and they can do activities. Secondly, again, we could recruit people directly that share their data with us. That could be transaction data. It could be maybe media spend data by running technology. And that's an automatic feed comes to us. Both instances fully privacy covered. They get rewarded for doing that. 
And then thirdly, we work with partners. So we might work with partners like flybys, where they go to their audiences to say, hey, you can also do pure profile surveys or share data, get rewarded. And they go out to their 9 million plus members and ask them to join our, our program, which is really exciting. Or secondly, we again go out to partners that have data and maybe they have location data or media data or transaction data. And again, we aggregate that data. It's all uh, anonymous, but we know age, gender, location. And then we maybe fuel audience intelligence or, or other insights. What makes us unique? Um, our, our depth and breadth that we work with partners so we can tap into large audience like Peer Profile makes us unique. Our technology solutions like Insights Builder, like Audience Intelligence and a couple of features in that, absolutely unique. Um, but also the way we work with clients, where we work with consumers, really stands us apart from others. And I recommend all of you to read the book Shoe Dog, um, which is uh, Phil Knight, and it's the story of Nike. What's really interesting about Nike is that identifies that innovation can be actually doing something better, not just launching actually something brand new. And Nike's um, really focus was do it better than Adidas and Puma. We'd all agree Nike did, does. They didn't invent the shoe. So we actually looked at how can we do things better in an existing market, as well as bring out some innovation into us. Both of those are innovation. Thank you. And I've just put down on my want to read list shoe dog. So <laughs> She'll do that. Okay. So the next one, conducting surveys and interpreting the results of those surveys. Well, you know, and you sort of covered some of this just now is not a uniquely commercial activity. Plenty of people do it. What makes um, pure profit? your profile different or unique to the rest? Yeah, it's all of that in, in one house. So for example, running service, as you said, not unique. There's about eight global players as we're one of to do that. Firstly, do it better, winning market share, and, and which we're doing. And that's both with employees joining us from competitors as well as clients. So do it better. But equally, all of those eight don't also have a media arm that enables us to go to clients and say, hey, we've identified who your ideal customer is. I can reach a million of those in Australia. Let me run a campaign for you. So that insights to activation is a unique service. Also having the pure amplify media arm, again, you're competing with publicists of Dentsu, WPP, et cetera. We're not saying that actually anything we do there is particularly new. However, all of what we do is based on that first party data, which all of them do not have. So again, the way we plan, the way we develop um, result, uh, the campaigns is all based on that first party data. It makes us unique. And then thirdly, we have audience intelligence. Um, in Australia, the largest competitor would be Quantium, 75% um, owned by Woolworths, valued at a billion dollars. Again, what makes our solution unique to Quantium is firstly, I can roll it out in any country because it's independent of any one partner. Secondly, they don't have the ability as we do to, I've understood, Sam Uber Eats, I understand that Menulog is bigger than me in a particular postcode, let's say Sandringham in Melbourne. I don't know why. What Uber Eats can do from our system is run a survey to all of the people in, in Melbourne or in Sandringham and say, why do you use Menulog? I can't do that in other people's solutions. We're going for patterns. I can do that in mine. That tells me the why. Then they can run a campaign from that single system to everybody in Sandrium that's using Menulog, say, hey, come and use Uber Eats in between earthquakes, that is. So three yeah. solutions all bundled together, all have unique elements, makes us unique as an organization. Great. Okay. Thank you. And the earthquakes are clearly topical. I hope everybody. I hope everybody okay is. Today. <laughs> yes. I hope everybody is okay in in Melbourne. Yeah. Agree. Um, okay. So we we are a, a wee bit over time. So perhaps we'll just run through three final questions and then we'll wrap things up. Um, so can you talk about the headcount in the business as at the end of FY twenty one, and how much do you want to grow it, and in which areas? Yeah, a, a very good question. Um, we we made a, a number of investments in uh, financial year 21. There are announcements throughout the year, and please go back, see our quarterly reports and our, our annual report. And in spite of all those investments, we still increased EBITDA from uh, uh, one point. 
four to three point one million. So really excited about that. So we feel that we're right sized now as a business. And when we roll out a new country, we actually just add commercial people in new locations. So, for example, we rolled out mainland Europe at end of January this year just added commercial people. They are then supported out of a hub in the UK. And then clients are either supported by our Indian outsource center, uh, Indian outsource, sorry, Indian operations center, um, or clients run our SaaS products. So uh, we, as I said, uh, uh, it means that a new office we roll out becomes profitable within a couple of months. So for us as a business, as I said, a key focus is growing outside of Australia, well, obviously growing in Australia, but growing out of Australia, outside of Australia. UK um, as a market is 14 times bigger than the Australian market. The US market is 40 times bigger than the Australian market. So it makes absolute sense. And it's really easy for us to grow those businesses and grow market share. Thank you. And um, there's a question here about your strategy around building revenues offshore, but that, that might uh, be the subject for another day or another presentation. Um, so just two, two left here. Growth in data and insights. Um, is this mostly new customer acquisition or customer logos was the question. Yeah, it, it's a combination of, of both. So um, uh, we've added 100 clients. If you look at presentations that we did in September of financial year 21, we talked about 600 clients. We now talk about 700 clients. So we actually added 100 clients in, in the year. And in addition to that, again, by growing our, our, data and in, uh, our data points that we had, our existing clients increased their spend as well. So combination of the two um, has grown that, especially in Australia, in uh, outside of Australia, it's those new clients that is, is faster growing the revenue there for us. Okay, thank you. And let's make this the last one because I promised we'd wrap up at one and we're, we're a touch over that. So uh, just on the SaaS platform, how do customers typically sign up? Oh, sorry, do customers typically sign up for multi-year contracts upfront? And how many customers do you have using the SaaS platform? Yeah, we actually have three different SaaS platforms. So we have Insights Builder. Insights Builder is I can, I'm, I'm, I work for Medibank. I can run my, or I should say, Adore Beauty, for example. I run my own surveys, uh, build my own surveys, run them, don't, don't have to talk to anybody at Pure Profile. That's typically a 12 month um, contract and actually is based on usage. So that's the number of projects that I run. Clearly, flybys who use um, the self Insights Builder as well run more projects than perhaps Adore Beauty do. Um, uh, but that is that model in the Insights Builder. In our community system, which again is a SaaS product, which is an example flybys and, and news use. Again, that's a multi-year, that one is a multi-year um, contract. And that's based on the number of people that actually they recruit. So again, uh, a flybys might recruit more people than a news um, because it's a larger audience and they might recruit more people than NESCAG. So again, multi-year project uh, contract, but actually based on the usage and number of people that come along. Audience intelligence, much more simple one, 12 month contract, $5,000 a month. And I have unlimited access from my brand self-administration to view my vertical. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Martin and Mel, for a great discussion. Um, Pure Profiles had some really impressive growth, both from a bottom line perspective and, and at the market cap level. So uh, I guess uh, I'd like to put that down to um, the focus you've, you've placed around actually meeting those evolving customer needs. So well done to both of you. Um, I, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. And, and by the way, I think it's a great team and also we're having so much fun. And if you have fun, clients recognise that and <laughs> revenues for it. Oh, yeah. awesome. Thanks for the right. lovely wrap. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Bye-bye. Okay. Pleasure. Bye. Um, I'd like to also sincerely thank everyone for making the time to join the conference today. Uh, we love the chance to showcase the great ASX talent that we're working with. Uh, and 
everyone I think on the conference today has demonstrated how quickly and nimbly, nimbly they've moved to support and address evolving customer needs. Uh, please join us tomorrow for day two of IRD Invest, where we will hear from healthcare companies solving evolving patient needs. And if you'd like to look at the agenda for that, please visit our website at www.irdepartment.com.au. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.